You're listening to How to Win with Mike Moore, the podcast that provides you with practical insights on how to win in every arena of life. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. We're so glad to have you with us. You remember how this podcast began on the Word. It's still on the Word, but we have a new format, and I'm so excited to have my daughter, Tiffany, who is the director of uh, How to Win podcast. She's going to be with us today, and guess what? We're going to be talking about uh, one of the most important things that a believer can do, and that is prayer. We're going to be talking about the importance of prayer. When you look at scripture, you see Jesus placed a priority on prayer. And in my ministry of over four decades, prayer was really critical to my relationship with God, but also critical to my success in ministry. Prayer is so very, very important. We're going to dive deep into this. And I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited about this one, too. It's interesting. um, Prayer is one of those things for me. um, And I always just like to give my experience on everything that we talk about. But prayer is one of those things that I feel like I've matured in. Because originally when I started off, I knew I needed to pray. But I don't think I fully understood the importance of prayer, why prayer is important, and even how to pray. So um, as we get ready to go into it, why? Why do you think prayer is so important? I think prayer is is so important and and really it is the thing that Satan will fight you really hard on. Mm. Not only Satan, but your flesh will fight you really hard on it. I think prayer is important because it's it connects us to God. Mm-hmm. See, God is everywhere, and if you're born again, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, but it's possible to engage life and never consider God. Yeah. But prayer is important because in prayer, we can express our gratitude. Mm Mm-hmm. Because we got a lot to be grateful for. Yeah. But it's also a place where we can get direction Mm -hmm. because we can't see down the road. We can't see around the corner, but God can. Mm -hmm. But it's also a a place where we can receive Mm -hmm. the help that Jesus has already purchased. Yeah. And and then it's it's, it's just a place where we can spend time with God. Mm -hmm. I mean, spend many real time yeah. with the creator of the universe. Mm-hmm. It, it's extremely important. I n- Now that I've learned, because you said something, you said that it's been a journey for you. Mm-hmm. And I, I can agree with that. It's mm-hmm. been a journey for me. And even now I'm learning uh, what some people may called the art of prayer mm. how to do it what is it that's good the, the art of prayer that's, yeah, that's, yeah the art of prayer yeah. uh, because you can develop mm-hmm. in your life of prayer it, it can it, it can grow and, and develop in, in your life of prayer and it's also abstract when you think of, of prayer it's abstract meaning um it's different, but it's it's so when you think of abstract art, it's different, but it's beautiful at the same time. And you know what's good about prayer? It's personal. Yeah. And what I mean about personal, and as we get into it, it's not a formula. It's not and, and for those of you that are listening and watching today, this is not gonna be about a formula. It's not gonna be about us telling you how to pray yeah because it's personal um it's based off the individual there's Mm -hmm. no 
one size fit mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah. You know, the way you pray and the way I pray will be different. Yeah. What's important is that we have a connection with God. I'm glad you said that because we have so many people that are watching. And what our intent is that people who are new in the faith can learn something and people who've been walking with God can learn something as well. So in these conversations, we are going to talk about how we can develop our faith, but also the impact mm-hmm. um, of prayer, not faith, but prayer. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about developing prayer, how did you develop your prayer life and what did that look like for you? Okay. And and, and it's, 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 it's different because prayer for me has been connected to my personal life. Yeah. Prayer for me has been connected to my family. And prayer for me has been connected to my church. Now, I've been connected to other arenas, but that's my that's kind of like my inner circle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My life, my family and my church family. Yeah. It, and then the ministry it has been connected to all that <sighs> growth, prayer, learning to pray. And I think I pray a little bit different than most people mm-hmm. uh, because prayer is comprehensive. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is it, it it may involve petition where you pray for things, mm-hmm. but it is about gratitude. You know what I mean? It's about thanking God for what you have. And we got a we got a uh a set of, a lesson on gratitude. We got a lesson on gratitude. Yeah. It's about worship. It's it's about uh, agreement, mm-hmm. and see. So it, it's 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 about building yourself up. It's about loving on God. It's not just about petition. Yeah. In fact, to be very honest with you, I very rarely ask God, like, give me this. I very rarely, I very rarely pray like that. And I think, but I think though, and I don't know if that's the service that the church culture has made, but a lot of prayer is a lot of petition. God, can you do this for me? God, but there are so many different assets or so many uh, different phases of prayer. There's Thanksgiving prayer. There is petition prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for a lot of people who are new in the faith, it's a God, give me, give me, give me. Right. That's how I'm praying type of I'll, type I'll of explain prayer. to you what I meant because petition prayer is important where, where you receive from God or you have needs and yeah. you take your needs to God. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying petition prayer is not important. But I don't pray like most people pray. For example, my way to pray is more consistent with agreement Mm -hmm. than it is asking. Now, mm-hmm. I, I, and mine is, mine is more asking, like, God, give me a sign. <laughs> if you want me to go left, just let the light go off right now. <laughs> well, you know, we laughing, but most people prayer life is give me. Yeah. Okay. Now, now this, this is how I pray. Mm-hmm. Okay. My prayer is related more to what the word says. Mm-hmm. And it's re- more related to what Jesus did. Yeah. For example, for example, uh, I wouldn't, I don't ask God to heal me. If I'm a challenge physically and everybody at some time may be challenged. Now you're going to have to break this down because okay. when you hear that, I don't ask God to heal me. I Most people are thinking like, what? I never ask God to heal me. I never. And and I can have, for teaching purposes only, Mm -hmm. I had COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, I Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with COVID. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask God to heal me. I never asked him to heal me. If I had a headache, I wouldn't say, God, heal me. Mm -hmm. My my prayer life is based off the word, Mm -hmm. what the word says, Mm -hmm. and it's based off what Jesus accomplished in redemption. The finished word. Yeah. Okay. okay. So when I when I see that Jesus came here and lived the perfect life, died on the cross, was raised from the dead, and then the scripture says 
in First Peter two twenty four, by whose stripes you were healed. Yeah. And then the Bible also says in Matthew eight seventeen that he bore my sicknesses, mm-hmm. took my infirmities, and bore my sicknesses. Then from the Bible specific perspective, Jesus has already paid for my healing Yeah, because he bore this condition that I'm experiencing. Mm-hmm. Now, the condition is real. Right. The symptoms are real. I'm mm-hmm. not denying the symptoms. I'm mm-hmm. not saying sickness doesn't mm-hmm. exist, yeah. but I'm basing it on the fact that I have a condition that's in my body and the word says that Jesus came in the flesh and that Jesus bore what I'm experiencing. Yeah. He bore my sickness. And then the scripture says by his stripes, I was healed. Yeah. So my prayer wouldn't be God heal me. My prayer would be God. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah that I'm healed from this condition Mm -hmm. by your stripes. I believe you took this and I thank you. And now from that point on, I'm not even talking to God about it. I'm just saying, Satan, no, I don't receive that because that's not mine because Jesus took mine. So it's prayer, but it's not like God healed me because if I say God healed me, then I am asking him to do something that he's already done. Yeah. And most people, I think, miss that aspect because some people, when they're praying, they're thinking, "I, if I pray for 10 hours, if I do something, they're putting all of the pressure on themselves for God to heal them. But the, what you're saying and what we know to be true is that Jesus already did it. The work is already done. And so all we have to do is just thank him for the things that he has already and done. And I think prayer prayer has to be Bible based. Yeah. Or if it's not Bible based, then we're just going to be simply begging. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's not my prayer life from a petition standpoint has more to do with agreement. Yeah. You know, like if I, if I uh, come to a session or I've been up all night and I have to do something the next day, mm-hmm. then I'm thanking God for quickening my body. Yeah. I think the spirit of God, the scripture says that he will quicken my mortal body. So I'm agreeing with, I'm agreeing with that. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is in me. I thank you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thanking him for quickening my, my mm-hmm. body. I'm thanking him for the fact that he's anointed me. So I'm not really trying to get God to do it as yeah. much as I'm receiving and yeah. agreeing yeah. that he's already done it. And you don't really know what to thank him for if you're not spending time in the word, yeah. knowing what the word says yeah. about your specific situation. You know, the beauty of the, of the father, here's the beauty of the father is that he, he, you know, for the most part, he's not very technical like we are. Yeah. He, he's not like, oh, you didn't, you didn't say that in that place, mm-hmm. in that place, mm-hmm. you know, much of what we receive from God, it has nothing to do with we did it perfectly. Yeah. You know. God loves us. He He wants us to receive what mm-hmm. he purchased for us. Mm-hmm. But I think we end up undermining it by begging. Yeah. I think begging is, you know, years ago I was praying for, I was, it was early in my ministry. First couple of years of my ministry, I was praying for, in a church for people to be filled with the spirit Yeah, and people will come up in mm-hmm. the line mm-hmm. and they would say, oh, Jesus, please, please, Jesus, please. And mm-hmm. I had to really stop them. I mm-hmm. said, now stop that. Mm-hmm. Stop that. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't. The, the, the way you get your, the way you hinder your prayers from being answered is begging. Yeah. yeah. Begging. Yeah. Begging does not move God. Mm-hmm. It's understanding and having appreciation for what God has said in the word. Right. And agreeing with it. When I which when is I, different. When I think about uh you talking about that aspect, it came back. I was recently li- listening to, and it's so funny how God works. I was listening to Ruth, wasn't thinking about Boaz. I was just studying Ruth. But in it, um, something that stood out to me where it says that Boaz was a wealthy man, mm-hmm. right? And Boaz was was wealthy enough to where he could take care of Ruth and her family. Mm -hmm. So if I'm praying for finances, but I don't know that the word where God says that he can, he can give me the finances to bless not only myself, but my family as well. Mm -hmm. That's something that I'm not going to be thanking him for. So I think it's so very important to really dive into 
any, any specific area of knowing what God says to you about those, those certain and, areas. And it, it goes back, Tiffany, to being in a good Bible teaching church. Yeah. Because you, you have to learn mm -hmm. what the Bible says. You have to grow in what the Bible says. Yeah. You have to have your own personal time where you're studying God's word mm -hmm. because you won't know what's in it. It's almost like, uh, it, it, to me, life is like a test. Yeah. Okay, life is like a test. And God has given us an answer book. The answer book is the Bible. Yeah. Okay. If I never read the Bible, mm -hmm. if I never studied the Bible, if I'm not in a church that's teaching me the Bible, mm -hmm. I won't know what the answers are. Yeah. But if I'm, and that's where it begins, getting in a good Bible teaching church that's opening up the word to you and then having a strong, consistent time that you spend studying and reading, meditating the word so that you will learn what's in the answer book. Yeah. And then much of, and, and I don't want to sound, I, let's talk a little bit about the types of prayer. Okay. Okay. For example, uh, the prayer of Thanksgiving, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. That's It's simple. It's just you thanking God for all the things that you've done. Yeah. And you don't have to do it in Elizabethan language. Yeah. You, you don't have to say, thus is thou, thou, thou has been as good, thou? Has been as good to <laughs> me, uh, uh, yeah. oh, sovereign one. No, yeah. no, no, no. Quit that. God don't, that, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fake right there. That's mm -hmm. phony right there. Don't do that. You don't talk like that. People yeah. don't talk like that. So you just thank him. Thank him about what he's done for you. And then worship is time where you spend God saying, listen, you're wonderful. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. You're the source of every good and precious gift. So prayer has to be holistic. Thanksgiving, worship, then praying for others. Yeah. That's intercessory prayer. Yeah. Praying in the spirit. That's praying in tongues. The mm -hmm. Bible said when you pray in tongues, you build up your spirit. Mm -hmm. So there, there are different kinds of prayer mm -hmm. so it should be holistic the prayer life shouldn't be about give me give me give me give me give me yeah. it would be like this okay if you're a parent mm -hmm. and you have a child yeah and your child the only time your child talk to you if with a request, mm. can you give me this? Can you give me that? What are you going to say, Tiff? What are you going to say? I'm like, you always ask. Let me tell you the funny, <laughs> the funny thing. Y'all going to be like, I know you did not do this. <laughs> I have I have uh, men and women who are homeless who live by me, and they really are my friends. They uh -huh. really are my friends. And so one of the guys, he see me all the time, and he asking me for money. I say, you always asking me for money. Give me some money. Why don't you give me some money? <laughs> and he actually gave me some money. <laughs> so I think it's so funny. We joke with each other all the time. I was like, you can't be always asking me for money all the time. You do what you gonna do for me? But we just just joking with him. But yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Like you can't always go and no, begging and asking. It has to be holistic. It has to it has to be holistic. Uh, here is here is the the key. Mm -hmm. Here's the key. Mm -hmm. Well, I put it like this because we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff. But here's the master key. Yeah is remove prayer from a religious context. Mm -hmm. or just get away from it. Just mm -hmm. get away. Um, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. Mm -hmm. uh, just remove all that away. Yeah. Okay. Think about prayer as a relationship. Mm -hmm. And God is a person. Mm hmm OK, and you're going to be talking to this person. Yeah. And you're not you're not going to always be quoting scriptures. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you should. I quote scriptures. OK, mm -hmm. I want people to think I don't quote scriptures, you mm -hmm. know. But you, I, if I came to you and I said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And, and then I say another scripture, then I say another scripture, <laughs> then I say another scripture, then I say yeah. another scripture. And I think sometimes God be looking at us like, yeah, like, this ain't it. 
this is not yeah. what I was talking about. Yeah. God probably said that. God look at Jesus. Jesus look at God. He said, this is not what we were talking about. It's a yeah. relationship. You yeah. just talk to him. Now, it's going to involve the word. Okay. It, it's going to definitely involve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because he's the one going to teach us to pray. Yeah. He's going to guide us into praying, you know, it's the name of Jesus. All these are part of it, but it's a relationship. You're talking to a person. Mm -hmm. Some people, they talk so much and they don't quote all these scriptures and they don't never say, well, you know, I had a good day today, Yeah. you know, or this you know, happen today, or what did you think about that? You mm -hmm. heard that. I know you heard it because you know everything. What did mm -hmm. you think? It's conversational. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not just waving your hands and yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I think once people remove the religious part of it yeah. and all that rope mm -hmm. stuff. You know, then I think they can enter into something very special. Now we didn't we didn't talk about this, but I feel like you know the Holy Spirit moves, and when He moves, you just gotta flow with you it. You just okay? gotta flow. <laughs> so let's talk about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can can view speaking in tongues mm -hmm. as a spooky thing, a scary thing, and then you have some people who think that. Um, you have the speaking in tongues, gifts, and interpretation, like it being a gift, um, and then the interpretation. But can you speak on the Holy Spirit? Can everybody get access to the Holy Spirit? Or is it something that's just a gift that only people, some people can speak in the Holy Spirit? Can you speak on that? Okay, let's back up. I have to back up. When a person receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's say they hear about Jesus' life, death, burial, resurrection, and they say, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. Mm -hmm. And they invite Jesus into their heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus does come in their heart, but he comes in by means of the Holy Spirit. Okay. At the new birth, the moment you say the Holy Spirit comes mm -hmm. to live on the inside of you, mm -hmm. and his job is to teach you and guide you and help mm -hmm. you and strengthen you. Mm -hmm. His job is to help Help you to live the Christian life. Mm -hmm. His job is to reveal Jesus and everything that he's done for, for you in redemption. Mm -hmm. So he's on the inside of you. Yeah. Now, what when we talk about the being filled with the Spirit, we believe that there is an experience subsequent to salvation where the Holy Spirit in you comes upon you. Now okay. he's already in you. He comes on you. Mm -hmm. And that's called being filled with the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's called being endued with power. Mm -hmm. It's called the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But it is a subsequent event that takes place. The Bible evidence that a person is filled with the spirit is they will speak with tongues. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking with tongues is not critical to salvation. You can live a saved Christian life, die and go to heaven, never speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. But speaking with tongues beyond the physical evidence mm -hmm. is design, has a purpose, several purpose. Part of it is to build yourself up. Mm -hmm. When you're praying in tongues, you're building yourself up. It it the purpose also is prayer. I don't always know what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. I don't always know what's going on in my wife's life, but mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. And the Bible in Romans 8 says that we don't know how to pray, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit will pray through us. So mm -hmm. that is praying for others. Mm -hmm. Worship in tongues. Mm -hmm. So this thing about praying in tongues is spooky to people because they've never been taught it. Mm -hmm. So they they see tongues and they think about the person that's shaking or the person mm -hmm. that's bucking and I'm not putting any of that down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the person that maybe have foam coming out of their mouth mm -hmm. and can't control themselves. Mm -hmm. So they are frightened out of it. But speaking in tongues is a tool. Mm -hmm. It is a, a, a equipment that God gives us so that we can pray beyond our intellect. It's only so much we can pray about mm -hmm. with our intellect because we don't know what's going on in our personal life and others' life mm -hmm. and in the world. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit knows. Yeah. So he's given us the capacity to pray out 
beyond our intellect through tongue. And I think it's good because I remember waking up this morning. We we have to do, you know, the podcast stuff. And I'm always praying, all right, God, don't let them be listening to me. Let them be listening to you. But also acknowledging the Holy Spirit, like good morning, Holy Spirit. Help me today. Quicken my mortal body. Also with that. Um, but I also wanted to ask you as you was talking, do you remember the first time you tried to speak, uh, speak in tongues? Uh, yeah. You do? Uh-huh. I remember the first time I tried to do it, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, how I'm doing. So how important do you think having someone who can help you in the area of somebody who's interested in speaking I think, in tongues? I think, it, I think it's the environment. I think the environment is important because mm-hmm. I went to a church the first time. See, I didn't know anything about speaking in tongues. I was raised up in a denomination that didn't believe in that. Mm-hmm. And so I had a friend, close friend, who was introducing me into the spirit field life. So I started reading a little bit, and then uh, we went to her church. Mm-hmm. And in her church, they prayed in tongues, and they prayed for people to be in, to- in, uh, in tongues. Mm-hmm. So I went to the church. And they were praying for me, and people were standing around me, and they were saying stuff, but I didn't know what they were saying. Mm-hmm. And I was trying. I didn't know what. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. And I think it just ended. And I guess I, I felt like, well, I guess I didn't get it. <laughs> I, I, I get it. I guess I didn't get it. But I tried to look spooky to make yeah, it. I yeah. didn't want nobody to think I didn't get it because right. I didn't know what you try to do. Some I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I see nobody instructed. They just. Let's talk. You yeah, know, yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. told me they get, didn't give me no direct. They just start praying. Yeah. And then they said, talk, you yeah. know, and I'm trying to talk. Yeah. And I just, it was, it was, an, I was embarrassed <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't get it. Whatever yeah. they talk. See, yeah. I, see, really, I didn't know what I was, I didn't know. Nobody had taught me about it. Yeah. So I'm trying to do something without any teaching. But once I got information, I started reading the book and the book that really opened my eyes to it was a book by Rita and Dennis Bennett. They were mm. Episcopalian, spirit-filled Christians. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit in you, and in the book they talked about the spirit-filled life, the gifts of the spirit, and then they had a prayer where you pray wow. to be filled with the spirit. That's so good. in my office in Kentucky, by myself, I just followed the directions they were saying. I got filled with the spirit with nobody laying hands on me, nobody praying for me. In my office, I got filled wow. with the spirit. That's good. But see, the, the that's just one, that's just one avenue. And and some people, the way we communicate it. It can be false because we can tell people if you don't speak in tongues, you're not spiritual Mm -hmm. or if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. And I think that's error because I know a lot of people who speak in tongues are not spiritual. Yeah. And a lot of people who speak in tongues and don't act saved. So, So but it's a tool. It's equipment that gives you the ability to pray beyond your knowledge. Yeah. We can pray up to our knowledge. But we can't pray beyond our knowledge. Mm-hmm. And speaking with tongues help us to do that. But think about it. I think prayer, if it's if if you remove the religion, mm-hmm. it's really about a relationship. Now there's the part of intercession and about revival and all that. Yeah. But I think the first and foremost thing about prayer is you are having a relationship and you're talking to your father if you're born again. Mm -hmm. And and I used to talk to him though, even before I got saved, you know, like I I would talk to God all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, but once you get saved, he's your father and Mm -hmm. you're talking to him about every area of your life. Yeah. And, and you don't have to be ashamed. Mm-hmm. He's not going to embarrass you. He's mm-hmm. open to you. Mm-hmm. He knows where you are. If you don't know, it's simple. You know, I don't know much. Can you lead me to somewhere where I can I can learn? Mm-hmm. It, it's, 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 it, if people can get past the religion of it, yeah. they can see the power of it. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Have you ever struggled with prayer? Mm-hmm. Tell me about your struggle and then tell me, let's talk a little bit about 
why people struggle praying. If it's so wonderful, if yeah. it's important, yeah. if it connects us in a relationship to God, it develops. Us. Why don't people pray? Why do you think people pray? Don't pray. I think for me, one of the struggles that I had was it. I, I thought it had a look. And what I mean by look, I thought it looked like I had to be 45 minutes quiet, praying. And and for me, mentally, I'm trying to think about, okay, what am I going to say? What am I praying about? How does it sound? Does this sound crazy? So I was a little bit in my head. So I think some of it is people struggle because there's so much into their head. They're too much in their thoughts. Um, And then they also struggle because they feel like it's a look, like it has to be a certain time. And I think one of the things that I've learned is that it has to prayer can develop. The more you do it, the more you spend time in it, it will develop over time and it doesn't have to be a certain look. So what I do is I do a thing called the first 15. I take five minutes where I just worship. Mm -hmm. Then I take 10 minutes where I'm praying, reading the word, and then another five minutes just thanking him for what I, what I've just learned or prayed. So it's not a, um, I have to do a whole like it, it's not a big look thing and I have to do this certain routine it's more of for me just being intentional about praying with God so I think for a lot of people the struggle can be in their heads and they think that it's a certain look and then sometimes they just don't know where to begin okay I um I agree uh, I think there are a lot of reasons why people don't pray pray and I think that's what I meant about removing the religion of it. Yeah. Uh, you said something. You said, I thought it had to be four to five minutes. I think we need to move that off the table mm-hmm. because I don't think it's a certain time. Yeah. I don't think you've got to pray an hour a day. I don't think you've got to pray. I, I, I think, to be honest with you, I think it's good to be systematic, like mm-hmm. if you have a quiet time in the morning. A routine. And let's say you got 30 minutes. You mm-hmm. got 30 minutes because you got to go to work. You got to get the kids out mm-hmm. or or you got whatever you're doing. Yeah. And you know this is a time with no distractions. I could spend 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with being systematic. Mm-hmm. I think that's a key to, a key to consistency. Yeah. But... I think we need to help people to understand that it's not a time frame. Like, not God saying, like. You ain't spend with 10, you, you uh, spend 30 minutes with me. 10 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we if we move that out of the way and start thinking, like, if I text you, if I call you, you're not saying, or even if I call, you're not saying, you just spent Eight minutes. Yeah. No, you're not even thinking about that. Yeah. You just happy. I call. We talk for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. And I, I got some other things I need to do. I'm going to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. I talk to you later. Mm-hmm. See, that's relationship. Yeah. If we stop thinking, I gotta, t- I gotta pray this amount of time. No. If you got a quiet time in the in the morning, where you say you got thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't put him in a bucket. I mean, mm-hmm. don't just say, okay, I'm the I got I did my prayer time. I did that. Now it's religion. Now mm-hmm. it's it, it's a ritual. Okay, but watch this. Why not have that systematic thing? But why not just talk to him all through the day? Yeah. Why not say, what do you thought about that? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm feeling a little tired. I thank you for quickening my body, giving me the strength to be able to finish this. Mm-hmm. God, I really wanted to tell mm-hmm. her off. Yeah. You know, I really did. I appreciate yeah. you keeping me from telling her off. Mm-hmm. Now, what how, What do you think I should say next time that mm-hmm. happened? Mm-hmm. See, it's, it should be all through the day. It shouldn't. Some people, they don't pray at all. Yeah. Some people, they pray, but it's right in that bucket. That mm-hmm. time, I don't talk to you, God. I don't finish. I check to get that all. Yeah. No, it's a relationship. So you should be talking to him all the day. You can even say, I'm frustrated. Mm-hmm. You can say, I need you to help me with this word. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm sad. I think people don't pray because, number one, they don't see it as a relationship. Number two, it's kind of like you, uh, what you said. They think it's got to have a certain look. Mm-hmm. Whenever people start using Elizabethan and language like thus and thou and mm-hmm. this and mm-hmm. stuff like that, mm-hmm. they don't talk to nobody like that. Yeah. 
They don't talk to nobody like that. Yeah. And God, proper thinking. Why don't you just talk to me <laughs> like you normally talk to everybody else? Right. So I think people don't understand. I think people don't learn about it. Mm-hmm. And see, you can Google anything now. Yeah, I mean, YouTube you can, everything. You can Google anything yeah. now. You can Google good how to pray. You can Google anything. Mm-hmm. I think it's a lack of knowledge. Yeah. I think people sometimes become disillusioned. Mm-hmm with it because they don't feel like it's working Mm -hmm. uh sometimes we put a time frame on god like Mm -hmm. you know it's almost like we go to him in desperation gotcha when we should be talking to him all the time Mm -hmm. so when we go to him in desperation we really in fear and worry and anxiety yeah because we ain't been talking to him because a lot time. of the time it is a fear, like it, if it, I don't do this, something's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so it's, it's running to him when you're desperate rather than developing a daily routine, t- daily uh, a regular activity of talking with God and spending time with God. And so people don't understand the word is a part of prayer that prayer really is finding out what God says yeah. and then agreeing with him. Yeah. Like your word says this and I agree with you. Yeah. And, and, and if they learn that they don't, they see don't have to spend all this time. Yeah. People spend a lot of time. It, my, my prayer life is more, it's more about other folk and mm-hmm. about different things than I'm spending all this time trying to get God to do something. People are trying to get God to do something that he's already done. Yeah. That's a big a big problem with, with the issue of prayer. And then busy. Sometimes we're just so busy doing other stuff. Then we will make time. That we don't make time for God. Yeah. You know what I mean? And really, it's because we got it in a religious box. hmm See, it, think about it. If I don't spend time with him, but I'm spending time with others, mm-hmm. then I'm saying others are more important than him. Yeah. Yeah. You you mentioned that you spend time talking about, and I think we're going to go a little bit over mm-hmm. on our time on this one. You mm-hmm. talked a little bit um, about you praying for others. I wanted to talk to you about the impact of prayer, but I want to talk to you mm-hmm. about the impact of prayer in different in, in four different areas. I want to talk to you about the impact of prayer, personal prayer impact, um, family impact, um, church impact community impact. Mm -hmm. Um, So when you think about um, the impact of personal, how do you, how do you feel that prayer impacts you personally? Well, I've learned this, Mm -hmm. that every person has five basic needs, Mm -hmm. whether you're black, white, red, yellow, brown, rich, poor, educated, uneducated, American, not a Mm non-American, everybody got five basic needs, spiritual. Okay. Mentally, emotional, Mm -hmm. physical, Mm -hmm. relational, Mm -hmm. and financial. Every need that a person has fall within those Mm frameworks. And so in my own personal life, I pray along those lines for me. So if I'm praying for myself spiritually, then I know that from God's perspective, Mm -hmm. God sees me in Christ. Yeah. Okay, he doesn't see me over here and see Christ over here. He sees Mm -hmm. me in Christ. So when I know who I am, I'm a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm righteous in Christ. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm bold in Christ. Mm -hmm. I know that I have every need met in Christ. Then I am actually agreeing with God about my position in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there are emotional and mental needs. Well, what does the Bible says? It says, cast all your cares on him. Yeah. Okay. Jesus says, my peace, I leave with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I receive that peace. That's mentally emotional. And then there's physical that has to do with your health. I'm praying about that and I'm agreeing with God. And then my relationships, I pray for myself Mm -hmm. 
I pray for my family and I pray for extended family and then I pray for my church family and then in a session. So it, 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 the way I pray for me is basically the way I pray for everybody else. Well, that was the second one. We wanted to talk about the impact of family, right? Two questions. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it, do you have to pray with your spouse? That's one question. And then okay. why do you think as a family, you should pray together. Okay. I think that prayer is personal. And what I mean by that, there's no one side Mm -hmm. size that fit everybody. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about praying with your family. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for families to pray. Yeah. Okay, I, I do think it's important. And I think it's very important for families to pray, especially when the, their children and kids there, because the children are learning the importance of prayer yeah. by seeing it in their home. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, we would pray as a family. And sometimes we will grab hands and pray. Mm -hmm. And then I will always lay hands on y'all head and mm -hmm. pray over y'all, yeah. the word over y'all and, and plead the blood of Jesus over y'all mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so the kids are learning about the importance of prayer. Now, mm -hmm. when it comes to husbands and wives praying, mm -hmm. No one size fit everybody. Okay. Sometimes we try to make it fit. Mm -hmm. Okay. My wife, my wife, Pete, that's mm -hmm. her nickname. Mm -hmm. We do not spend most of our time what? praying together. Y'all don't, don't pray together. Y'all ain't, y'all don't look, y'all ain't uh, spiritually mm -mm. and y'all ain't praying together. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. We don't. And I know husbands and wives yeah, pray. It's and, no, yeah, it's nothing yeah, that they do that. that. And, yeah. and listen, y'all, listen, I'm not telling you don't pray with your spouse. I'm mm, saying yeah. that's great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I'm just saying, Pete and I, mm -hmm. we pray about things together. Together. Okay. Yeah. If it's debt, we trying to clear debt, we may yeah. pray about it together. Yeah. Okay. We have projects. We talk about the projects that we want to do during the year. Yeah, the we, direction you may want to go. Yeah, we may pray about that. Yeah. Or if there's things that come up, she'll grab my hand, I'll grab my, her hand, and we'll pray about that. Mm -hmm. But our regular prayer times, we don't do that together. We don't do it. She goes in her office or I see her walking around the house, uh, walking through the house, she be praying. Mm -hmm. I may be up in my library upstairs and my office upstairs, and I be praying. So our personal time, we don't spend it. We don't even do... Oh, it's going to sound like we call <laughs> I know it's going to We don't read the Bible together like that. Uh. Yeah. We, we don't we don't read the Bible together like that. So y'all ain't getting interpretations together. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Now, now I don't I don't think that's wrong. Yeah, I think it's great. I think that's I, cute I, if you I read the Bible together. I hear couples they read together. Yeah, now, I, think I think that's that would so be cute. wonderful. I yeah. think that would be great. We just never did that. <laughs> we never did that. You know, she got her time she spent with the Lord. She yeah. read the Bible. I got my time with the Lord. I read the Bible. She she got her uh, earplugs So I in. need to be open to whoever the Lord blesses me with that I may or may not be reading the Bible together. <laughs> and, and see, it's nothing wrong with doing it together. Because right. I know I got some people out there, they're thinking, Lord... He done messed it up. <laughs> he done messed us up because they're going to be trying to do what they do. And we had it going together. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah. reading and we were studying the Bible together. And I'm asking him what he got. And, and he's asking me. <laughs> trying to mess great, up their okay, little plan. Okay, so listen. Do, let me, okay. <laughs> do not stop what you are doing. Yeah. If it works, great. That's good. Keep doing your thing. I was just saying about us because I know people put everybody in the same thing. Yeah. And they think, y'all don't read the Bible together. Yeah. You know, pray together. You know what I mean? There's no one size fits all. Yeah. That, that That's the whole thing about prayer is we try to make how we pray 
everybody else pray that way. Yeah. I've said it more than one time in this in this episode. No one side mm-hmm. fit everybody. You know, yeah. you go and you got these gloves and, mm-hmm. and they fit everybody. Yeah. They, fat, you know, a socks. It, yeah. It's, no side. <laughs> everybody put the sock on. Yeah. No, no. Prayer is not like that. Yeah. Prayer has to fit you. It, it fits you. It's personal. That's good. And so some person might say, well, I pray three hours a day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then another person said, well, I tried to pray three hours a day. I was, <laughs> I couldn't get past 30 minutes. Yeah. And so sometimes and they lose people, focus. Yeah. And yeah. then, well, I pray late at night. Some people, you pray late at night, you be falling Fall asleep. asleep. Yeah. And then other folks, I like getting up early in the morning. Well, I like getting up early in the morning, but I like being up at night too. Yeah. So it, it, it it's just what fits And you, you. got to figure out what works. Because I used to try to do that wake up early in the morning praying thing. Because Jesus, he woke up early and he prayed. And I said, my morning early is going to be 12 o'clock at night, midnight. And you know, I tell you something about my prayer life. It's different at different times. Yeah. I may go, I may go through a season and I do it this way. And I, my Bible reading the same way. Yeah. I may go through a season and I'm reading through the New Living Translation, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and I'm I do something else, yeah. you know, and so I don't I don't it, it's nothing more than understanding that there's no time limit, mm-hmm. there's no right way or wrong way to do it, mm-hmm. there's no formula yeah. to it, yeah, and if the people keep it in their mindset about relationship. And it's you and God, and you're praying, Holy Spirit, teach me to pray. Yeah. Holy Spirit, guide me and pray. Yeah. Help me to learn how to pray. Mm-hmm. He'll do it. He'll do it. Before we end, I want to talk about two more things. The one I said, community, whether it be church community, and then also praying for world, whether it be leaders and different things like that. Because we talked about, you, you mentioned that prayer is not always about what can I do? I think prayer is also praying for our community, whether it be church, and then also praying for our leaders. So what is the impact do you feel? Because some people feel like it may be impactful. Praying for your church may not be impactful. What are your thoughts on praying for your church community as well as the world and leaders? I do all three of them. I think it's very impactful to pray about your church family. Mm-hmm. Because that a part a part of the role of the pastors to pray, yeah. and then members should be praying about their church, mm-hmm. uh, because there is such a thing as corporate prayer. Mm-hmm. You should be praying about your environment. We see corporate prayer, and I think it's Acts 4. Uh, the the believers were persecuted, and then they got together, and they prayed out loud. Mm-hmm. And the Bible said that the, the, the place shook. That was corporate prayer. Mm-hmm. It's power in, in corporate prayer. Uh, I think many times we complain about our communities, but we don't pray for them. Yeah. You know, say not take authority over you. I bind you over this community in the yeah. name of Jesus. Because our power has the the power to our prayer has the power to stop things from going. Absolutely, into Father, I pray that you raise up laborers to speak to the community and yeah. laborers to minister your word and help mm-hmm. me to be a part of that answer. Mm-hmm. And I take authority and break your power over our community mm-hmm. and then pray. We got an election coming up. Yeah. Pray about the candidates, yeah. pray about God's will for it. Yeah. Cause a lot of times people, they just become political. They don't even mm-hmm. pray about I'm mm-hmm. this, I'm that. And they mm-hmm. just, they, so they don't ever, they don't ever pray at all about the candidates. They don't pray about, I think what people need to pray about is show me that person, Mm -hmm. show me their hearts. Because if you just listening to all the information coming through the media, then it's going to all be political. It's going to all be divided. But God can show you people. Yeah. You you can pray and say, Lord, show me that person's heart. Mm -hmm. Show me this candidate's heart. Yeah. You you'd be absolutely surprised what Mm -hmm. God will show you. And then the world, so much going on in the world, Israel, uh, Ukraine, Russia, all these nations are in conflict, but we're connected. 
Yeah. The world is connected. We have allies. So mm-hmm. if this happened with this ally, we're connected mm-hmm. to that. Mm-hmm. And we should be praying for peace. Yeah. We should pray for peace and bind uh, this destruction. The Bible says whatever we bind is bound. Whatever we loose is loose. I bind you over this wall. I yeah. bind you over this destruction right. and, and bind this hurricane from destroying lives, this tornado. I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. I think we have more authority in prayer yeah. than we realize. But you know what? We're we out, of, out time. of time. That was a good topic. I enjoyed it. I think one. it's a good topic yeah. too. And I trust that you got some out of it. You, you understand that in these episodes, there's no way we can cover every theme, every part, everything, but we want you to get something out of it. So I want you to let us know in the chat what you're experiencing. What do you think about what we're doing? Uh, it would be a blessing to, to for you to share it. Uh, they can go to the links and share it. Yeah, you can go to Facebook and YouTube, Mike Moore Ministries. You can go to MikeMoreMinistries.com or MikeMoore.com. And then you can also download the Mike Moore Ministries app as well. Right. Well, we're out of time. We look forward to seeing you next, next time. time. Pray God's blessings on uh, the rest of your week and, uh, and the rest of your uh, this, this month on you. In Jesus' name, amen.